Good pause YouTube. Hopefully you guys are having a good Wednesday. Now for those of you who have not got your tournament battles done for my tournament, please get those done. Also, I have an announcement at the end of the battle that I really want you guys to stick around for. It is going to be regarding my uploads for next week. Now, as you can see from the team preview, I'm actually using a bit of a bulky team, but originally I actually had Sableye in the place of Weavile and I had Choice Scarf Victini in the place of Bandit Victini, but I really wanted to use Bandit Victini and Weavile. So I threw those in there into this already built team and potential threats on my opponent's team are going to be the Chandelure, Shaman, and Sableye. Also, Blastoise isn't going to be a threat, but it is going to be a bit of a nuisance just because I do not have a spin blocker on this team and this team relies around getting up entry hazards. But I know I should be able to play accordingly with it with my Roserade, so hopefully I can prevent him from rap spinning. But if Chandelure is scarfed and I lose my Snorlax, then my whole team could be potentially just swept by Fire Blast or by Shadow ball also shaman if he is sub lead seed is going to prove to be really annoying especially if i do lose my roserade but yeah anyways i'm going to be leading off with my roserade as he's going to be leading off with the as elf now from prior experience i know as elf don't go straight for the stab psychic or the fire blast so what i decided to do was actually stay in predict him to go for the stealth rocks so i could get up a layer of spikes um unfortunately he actually ends up going for the taunt which i completely forgot about the fact that as elf can even learn that so he's going to go for the light screen which automatically tells me he is a dual screener so that means his last move is either Stealth Rocks or U-Turn, so that means that this Azelf is not going to prove to be a threat whatsoever, but more of a nuisance just because those dual screens could really uh, end up being game changing. So I'm going to go for another Sludge Bomb, get off around 48%, which is pretty good after the um, light screen was up, as this tune is going to bring in the Zapdos, which I found to be a bit odd, I don't know why he didn't bring in the Chandelure, but hey, to each their own. Above that, I'm actually able to get the Poison with the Sludge Bomb, which is 30%, and I did go for it back to back to back, so eventually I was bound to get it but now knowing that I am at full HP I should be able to take any one hit from the Zapdos because I saw leftovers I thought he was more of a bulky spread and then it turns out that he's actually offensive or maybe he's just um, more of a bulky attacker because that heat wave does way too much to my Roserade so obviously knowing I'm not going to be able to take another one what I'm going to do here is actually just predicting to go for the safe heat wave again and I'm going to bring in my Victini which as I said is banded so I'm going to bring in that and once you really think about it, offensive bulky Zapdos really isn't that bad with dual screens I suppose just because Zapdos does have very good natural bulk and has a very monstrous special attack so I might actually have to try that out sometime. So I did bring in my Victini now here I really thought about it for about a good minute and in the end I decided to just go straight for the fusion bolt because I knew the Chandelure switching was obvious also due to the fact that I knew he wasn't going to bring in Shaman. Uh, Fusion Bolt hits his entire team, so that was the safer and smarter play that I could have done in that situation. As he does bring in the Chandelure, obviously I do not want to take a Shadow Ball, so what I'm going to do is actually bring in my Snorlax, but it turns out that his uh, Chandelure is actually sub Pain Split, which has actually made it a whole lot more dealable if you ask me because now I don't have to worry about him being faster than my uh, Weavile so I will be able to outspeed that and hit it with a Night Slash borrowing the fact that he doesn't have a sub up later on in the battle so I go for the whirlwind as he goes for the pain split gets back all his HP and brings me down to about 52% as I'm going to whirlwind, whirlwind him out into the Shaman now because he has dual screens I'm pretty positive that he's just going to go for the substitute or the lead seed so I decided just to go for the body slam just wanted to get some damage off on the Shaman and he actually does predict that brings in the Sableye as the following turn um, I know he's more than likely just gonna go for the taunt or the will-o-wisp and I have a Victini so that's easily the best switch in I have for the Sableye hopefully he's not gonna predict that and go for the foul play and as you're about to see he doesn't so I can bring in my Victini for free as he actually ends up going for the will-o-wisp now because last time I did predict the Chandler switching this turn I'm actually just gonna go straight for the V crate and I am choice banded so this is utterly going to decimate this Sableye. There is no chance that that thing is living anymore. <laughs> so, managed to get rid of Sableye. One giant, giant nuisance in this battle was out of the way, which means I can get better leeway to bring in and stall a bit with my walls, not having to worry about Sableye switching in and going for Taunt and Will-O-Wisping. So he brings in the Azelf. Now, the way he brought it in, I know he's more than likely just gonna go for the Reflect, so what I'm gonna do is actually stay in and go straight for the V Create. Now, I am Choice Banded. This is, I believe, 180 base power, not factoring in Stab, and after the Reflect, that destroys the Azov, which is just great. So here, I know he's more than likely gonna bring in the Chandelure, but he actually brings in the Zapdos. Now, before anybody says, oh, your opponent's stupid for doing that, no. Because as you're gonna see here, he's actually going to bait me to go for the V Create, bring in the Chandelure. Luckily, uh, because I was at minus two special defense, I didn't want to stay in and take a Thunderbolt and I actually pulled my own double switch. And after the uh, Flash Flare boost, boost uh, 
Fire Blast, I believe, does about 30 to 40 percent the max special defense and max HP Snorlax. So definitely <laughs> switching into my Gligar really saved me a bit there in that situation. Now here, I actually really contemplated going for the Rock, but because you did have the Blastoise, I didn't want to go for that. So I decided just to go for the safe Earthquake on the Optus, and maybe he wanted to stay in and try to go for the Fire Blast just to see how much damage it would do. Unfortunately, he switches in Zapdos. Now I know he's more than likely just going to go for the Hidden Power Ice. So what I'm gonna do is bring in my Hit on top, which I know is very very weird, but just I don't know, I just wanted to bring in uh, him on top knowing that he more than likely is not going to stay in, fearing the fact that I do carry the Stone Edge. What I'm going to do is actually predict him to switch out into the Blastoise or the Shaman, and I'm actually going to go for the Toxic. Luckily for me, he brings in the Blastoise, and I'm able to get the... T yeah, no, I, I missed. I've been missing Toxic a lot with Will-O-Wisp lately. I, <laughs> I just want to hit Toxic and Will-O-Wisp, is that so much to ask? Anyways, uh, I'm just going to stay in, going to go for another Toxic as he ends up going for the Scald. And here, uh, he actually does not get the burn, but honestly, if he, even if he had burnt me, that wouldn't have been too game-changing. And I managed to get the Toxic off on the Blastoise because Blastoise is the one thing keeping my Weavile at bay from just destroying his entire team. So the fact that I got the Toxic off on that is just great because now I will be able to wear it down accordingly. So this turn, uh, predicting him to go for the Rapid Spin, I'm just going to bring in my Rosary. But he actually, he actually ends up going for the Toxic, but as you're going to see, even if he had gone for the Rapid Spin, again, it would have not been game changing in the slightest. So here is where the key play of this battle happens. He has Shaman, he has Zapdos, and he has Chandelure left. All which cannot outspeed my Weavile, and obviously I know he is going to be fearing the Giga Drain. So I actually pull a double switch out to my Weavile as he brings in the Chandelure. And yeah, at this point, you guys should know what's about to happen. Uh, Weavile is going to plow through his team. Uh, yes, it was a 6 0, but personally, I had a lot of fun in this battle. Plus, Bandit. Victini and Weavile got all the kills in this battle which just ah just made awesome plus look at the background I forgot to mention the background this is Iris's championship battle in black and white too and ah just looks so cool anyways regarding the announcement that I had starting this Saturday leading up to next Saturday I'm actually going to be doing a guest narration week where I sent eight of my friends one of my battles or each one of them one of my battles that I wanted them to narrate and what I wanted to do with this was that I want to give them more exposure because honestly I think they're all under subbed and what I want you guys to do in return is to give each video that will be uploaded a chance because who knows maybe you'll find a new person you want to subscribe to you'll find a new favorite narrator you never know I mean the most you lose in is like watching a six seven minute video and then the most you have to gain is gaining a new person that you like to watch a new battler that could become your favorite as I said but with that that guys you know what to do i do believe i am out of here enjoy the rest of your day haha <laughs> later